Welcome back to The Wandering Screen. I'm Matt Koss, and today I'll be looking at Andrew Hayes' latest film, All of Us Strangers. I want to start this review by shouting out some of my favourite queer cinema from the last year. Cassandro on Amazon Prime with Gail Garcia Bernal is a lot of fun. Nimona on Netflix is a gorgeous animation with so much compassion. And Australia's Of An Age, which is on Hulu now, pulsates and is brilliant and is really a must watch. Also, Theatre Camp is probably one of the best comedies of 2023. You may have heard about Andrew Hayes' All of Us Strangers as being a tearjerker. It might be one of the worst ways to go into a movie with that expectation that you're going to feel similar to audiences who have shared their experiences watching the film. I don't want to create that expectation, but rather I want to share my love for the film and hope that you go into it with open eyes and an open heart. Director and writer Andrew Hay is driven by the suddenness of a life-altering event and the stream of connection that exists between all of us. His stories focus on finer details of relationships like a brief one-night stand that evolves into an ill-timed premature romance or a married couple of 45 years whose relationship disintegrates as their anniversary looms. His latest feature, All of Us Strangers, revolves around Adam, Fleabag's Andrew Scott, the hot priest, who suffered a monumental loss early in his life. His recollection of the events re-emerges in the present as he begins a romance with a lonely tenant in his apartment building. All of Us Strangers is based on the Japanese novel Strangers by Taichi Yamada, and features terrific performances from Andrew Scott and Paul Mescal and Claire Foy. I love how Hay utilizes natural lighting and lets uncomfortable conversations hang unanswered. It feels like having a memory and that question of whether it was real or not. When we first meet Adam, he's alone in his apartment, barely starting a new script and watching TV on the couch. One night he's surprised to hear a knock at the door and it's his neighbor, Harry, Paul Mescal, who stands quietly unpredictable and drunk and horny. Harry gives the signs of wanting to hook up, but Adam declines, uncertain it's what he wants, but wanting it all the same. This moment allows him to consider the possibilities of companionship because the absence in his life has solidified his loneliness. Meeting Harry drives Adam's mind to circulate around the possibilities of love without loss, to love someone long enough despite one day losing them. Searching for inspiration for his autobiographical script, Adam ventures to his childhood neighborhood in South London, and while standing in the park, notices a mysterious stranger appear behind him. Adam follows the stranger through suburban streets until they arrive at the front door, of his childhood home. His parents, only named Dad, played by Jamie Bell, and Mum, played by Claire Foy, are unaged since the day they died, and they greet him like an old friend. Mum and Dad are physically and spiritually unchanged, unaware of modern sensibilities and ways of communicating openly. As I mentioned, I wouldn't want to impart any kind of expectation, but one thing I do want to mention, because it was such an experience in the theatre, is that there was a man openly sobbing during my screening. It got to me too. And I think what Adam's going through is entirely relatable and sincere. I was heartbroken for Adam and his need to find the voices of his parents to fill in those gaps of understanding and how they might connect with him today. His memories folds into the present while he spends time with Harry. And quickly, the distinction between reality and the present is blurred. Each time Adam visits his childhood home, he is afforded moments to talk to his parents, like with his mother about being a gay man and her possible stigma and misunderstanding of queer life and culture or learning of his father's regret for not consoling Adam as a child when he was crying alone in his room. We're inside one of those reverberations of grief that's arrived 
like a crashing wave. No matter how much time forces its way between tragedy and the present, it never reduces the impact of that loss. He's just as much pulling the ghosts of his past towards him as he is holding onto the hope for the next stage of his life. The film is very personal and Hay has openly spoken about writing the script from his own experiences and it's very generous in that way. All of Us Strangers has the disquieting ambience similar to 45 years with that undercurrent of tension and that romantic and intimate beginning to a new relationship like We Can. Andrew Scott is so affecting in this role. He walks around with this hollowness and you can see that he wants more. He wants to smile, he wants company. There are scenes where he plays Adam with childlike affectations and he's fully earnest. Claire Foy carries this stoic adoration with such ease while Jamie Bell is compassionate and warm and Paul Mescal in my eyes can do no wrong. He is wonderful in this film, particularly in his first scene standing in Adam's doorway. In the middle of the film, Adam apologizes to Harry for sharing his tragic loss, that it's something he maybe should have moved on from by now. And Harry simply responds that, it doesn't work that way. No matter how many years pass or conversations are had to reconcile that loss, it's the part of death that keeps on living. Drink. This Japanese. It's meant to be the best in the world, but I, I couldn't tell you why, so. No, oh, thanks. Okay, um, okay, how about I come in anyway? If not for a drink, then for whatever else you might want. Um, I think that's a good idea. Thank you for joining me today. Subscribe to my channel for more TV and film reviews and let me know in the comments section what you thought about this film. See you next time.